I just want to say this. There is no substitute for winning. We must win. We will win. Win is the name of the game. Dallas Cowboys fans, uh, let's get ready to rumble. we got a job to do, and we're going to do it, baby! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys with your third and seven guys. I am Jesse Jackson. Joining me today is Colin. Mr. Bernier. And Chris. Your boy CJ. Uh, so, this is a special playoff edition. Yes, sir. We're recording this on Sunday before the Cowboys play Monday night. Uh, so, we are screwed. Uh, <laughs> Let us talk about, before we get to the playoff game, let's talk about uh, wrapping up the season. Uh, very happy that we got 12 wins, though we are not charging into the postseason. We are kind of limping uh, into the season as if we had a um, a busted tire <laughs> that we're going. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Colin. Uh, what do you think of uh, horrible Performances against the Commanders. I mean, the last good win was Philly. Yeah. So what's your thoughts? I, I mean, the Philly win was huge. I, I thought that was a really good game. Everybody said, you know, Hurt wasn't there. We got Gardner Minshew, probably the best backup in the league. He was a starting quarterback a year or two ago. Um, so I, I, I don't take that win as anything less than. Um, but yeah, rough way to end the season. It was a, we, we've been limping the whole season basically with that getting hurt. You know, uh, Rush was able to lead us through for a couple weeks, but I mean the, the season's been up and down the whole time. But I think the through line has been making a play when you need to, and that's what tomorrow night's all about. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, no, I agree, and I say that we are limping into it, but we have won eight out of ten. No, they haven't been perfect games they're never going to be a minnesota game but they did if you put your cowboys hat on they did like you said colin win most of those games and the two they lost they had a 14 point lead against green bay and then they had at green bay and we lost in overtime and then jacksonville was 17 at jacksonville and we lost in overtime now, granted you kind of shoot yourself in the foot and then i'm sorry and then washington we we lost to but before that now, we'll talk here in a minute about is that really a big key to their success? Because I'll tell you, as a little preview, remember last year we put 50. I guess it really depends on who you play too, right? Because remember the Giants in 2007, or yeah, remember when they went against Brady and them? They lost, but they gained a lot of momentum. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Same of the same stuff for observations. It was ugly from the beginning, and the Cowboys can't stop the bleeding. We went three and out. And then anger, he muffed that punt, tried to kick it, got tackled, told oldie JW watching the game, all right, well, that's it's seven nothing now. And then we, what was the other? We oh, the, yeah. The punt. So we were yeah. going to get the ball back, right? And then Turpin, who made the Pro Bowl, um, take it back. He, yeah, take it back. <laughs> Strip him of it. He yeah. then fumbled. And then we never could uh, get it back. And I feel like, the Cowboys always are like that. When something bad or for unforeseen happens, it's hard for us to get it back. Now, we did, like, against Houston, have that goal line stand. And against, like, the Colts, we had, like, 30 points in the fourth quarter. So, like, we have responded really well. And we're going to talk about the game. I do feel good about Monday night because we haven't lost back-to-back um, season. But for Washington, ugly beginning. Couldn't stop the bleeding. I think also, too, is that I don't want to get y'all's thought is that it was only 13 to six at halftime because we had that CD lamb and we dropped or we missed that extra point. And it was only 26 or 20 to six at the end of three quarters, but we only had 27 carries for 64 yards. And Prescott had like, I think 35 or 38 passes. Well, we weren't down really that much. I feel like we abandoned the run. It was those typical Cowboy games where, we had a lot of expectations, and it was just deflating. And we, from the beginning, really had our head up our booty, couldn't find our rhythm. I, well, it felt like past years instead of this season, because like you said, they did bounce back. They could stop the bleeding a couple times this year, and that's why they had that run where you're ending up 12-5. and five. 
But those two and games, real quick, those games, and real quick, bad. you're right because the first game and the last game are the only two that we got blown out. So one of the yeah. things that I always think of is when they were talking, when Bruce Springsteen, take a drink, was going to play the Super Bowl, he said his biggest fear was sometimes when the band comes out, they're just flat. They're just not connecting to the audience. And what he says is, I have to call an audible. I have to shake up the set list. I have to pull a song that I normally would play at the end of the set early. I do something different. And he says, my worry is playing the Super Bowl is I only have 11 minutes. I don't have time to shake up. So if we don't come out hitting on all cylinders, they do. And so I, I know as it's easy for us as fans to go, oh, what do you mean bad week? You only play 17 weeks. You know, you paid a lot of money. But like today, you know, I, I, I knocked over a lit candle and put hot wax on our uh, carpet. I, my mouse had broken, so I was unplugging my mouse and I took my PC flat but didn't unplug my headset so the USB plug on my headset is now broken. And so now that like Linda's like, you're just having a bad day, aren't you? I go, yes, yeah, right. I am just having a bad day. So was the Commander's game just one of those where, because how good is our punter? Really good. How often has this happened? Ev- never. Mm-hmm. How often do you do a freak, you know, yeah. a, you know, a, you know, a fair catch and not catch it? But, You just, the burnt dog dreads the fire. We are worried because we have had almost y'all's football conscious life. The Cowboys have done nothing good. Mm -hmm. And so you just, we're we're waiting for it. You you look at it objectively though. I am nervous about Turpin because over the past couple of weeks, either he's fallen on it or I think he has had another turnover. I know he made the Pro Bowl, but he hasn't had a touchdown. I'd love for him to get. Uh, a TD on Monday, but you're right, unfortunately. But the, also, 2016 had Prescott and Zeke on it. You know, that's kind of the group, right? Yeah. Now, and 2018, they did beat Seahawks, but then they got drilled by the Rams. Yeah. And then San Francisco last week, and San Francisco looks really good again this year yeah. with their third string quarterback. Yeah. They beat us up, you know? So I, I get that 30 years isn't all on them, but the past yeah. five or six is on them. Well, and. We're Brady. We're zero and seven against Brady. He we we don't play well on grass. We have not won a home playoff game since the early nineties. It has been since the nineteen ninety two NFC Championship game. Thirty years. Yeah. Now, as the guys talked about, part of that is during the early nineties we were so good we had home games. Yeah. It's but still, still o, it's still zero and eight though. Yeah. So that's that's a lot of games. So and everyone is going. Everyone, most experts are going, Tampa is a losing record, Brady's 45, the Cowboys should take care of business. And I'm just saying, I I hope so. I want so. Mm -hmm. We're going to do our part, but it's a little nerve-wracking thinking, but there are no gimmies in the playoffs. There isn't any team that you go, oh, good, I wish I were playing them. No, because they're good. If the funny thing is, is that if you just were to take off and just look at the laundry, don't have names, and just look at the numbers and the records, you'd go, well, darn, this this Cowboys team should beat this Tampa Bay team. You know, yeah, like we got the best we got the best seating, right? Like, we, yes. well, we lucked out. Boy, we actually did luck out without winning the division. And then you remember, oh, no, they got Tom Brady on the other, on the other side, and he is 7-0. and And also – Tom Brady, postseason records, he's got the most games played. Or I don't know about this the most, but he's got 47 games played, 35 postseason wins. He's been to 10 Super Bowls, and he's won seven of them. He lost to Nick Foles, and he lost to Eli twice, which still blows my mind. Well, he hasn't won any playoff games as a 45-year-old NFL player, so... And the, he has to come see us and prove yeah. And Brady is 0-0. He hasn't beat the Cowboys in 2023. Okay, uh, and, and like you said, it was on the players, but we do have a different coach this year than sixteen and eighteen. 
Yeah. So. Different defense. I, I think the defense was trying to play tough. They did in the first half of that Commanders game. They were trying to keep us in it. They made a couple stops, got a turnover, but – I think the defense is going to be crucial for us in this next phase. If you, it, it's been proven time and time again. If you make Brady uncomfortable early, he gets uncomfortable. Yeah, but he also leads the league two point two seconds on average getting the ball out. So that diminishes our pass rush. Which for for Cowboys, we ended up the year eighth in pass defense, twenty second in rush defense. Tampa now. Has only had 200, I think, rushing, over 100 rushing yards, or maybe three. One of them, though, was week one against your Dallas Cowboys. And we also led the league in 33 takeaways. Is that going to translate? Can we get a turnover on Brady, who they will be, if we, they're, the way if you look at it, if you take the Cowboys out of it, Tampa, they can't run. They do have some horses on there, but Brady also has shown his age because their offensive line is in shambles. So, oh, wow, man, the Cowboys have a great defensive line. It is a 45-year-old statue back there. We do have Diggs. Now, our backup corner, Brady's going to go. He's been looking at our secondary for two weeks now. So, he's going to – there's going to be plays where we're going to put our head down and go, oh, man, because he knows where our weaknesses are. But can we get a tip in the air and get a pick that way? Because I don't think Brady's going to throw it to us. But can we get a fumble? Can we get a takeaway? And and you're right. If Parsons can show his magic, if he can do what he has done in the past uh, during regular season, you know, that gets you a little hope. And I, I do agree with – I was reading a columnist. It's on the other people on the line to get some sacks as well. Mm-hmm. If they're double teaming Micah, then someone else has got to step up and say, okay, let me make this happen. Let me see what I can do. Yeah. So, and yeah. also, when Parsons is uh, one-on-one, he needs to make a play as well then. Because he was yeah. first-team All-Pro, first time, in, uh, I think, for the Cowboys franchise that a rookie defensive player has been first-team All-Pro in their first two years, whatever that means. Yeah. He, on Monday night, he's one of those star players. He's kind of like a Luka, where the lights are a little bit brighter. He shows up. He kind of is that dude, but that's when the weather's hot. So, like, I'd love to be able to see kind of maybe his it's coming out party tomorrow night. I mean, it's in Tampa. It's going to be warm. No worries. Yeah. True. The offense needs to run the ball. Yeah. They, they have to stick with the run. They can't get away from it. They can't get scared or start doing all yeah. this nonsense. Yep. You might need to shake it up if something if they're coming out flat. Shake it up. Yep. Sure. But – Stick with the game plan. You have two of the best running backs in the league in your backfield. Might not have them next year. You better run the dang ball. And, th- and there's been uh, some speculation that because they've been trying to run and they're they're not making but one or two yards on first down, do you give Dak a quick out route, gets three, gets four, quick run to – one of his wide receivers or a tight end to get you second and six or, you know, second and seven. I'll say right now, I don't want Dak throwing any out routes. Going back to that Washington game, threw a fake pick six and then realized, oh, hey, buddy, let me go ahead and get you that good thrown ball right there. I am worried about Decoder Mm -hmm. because uh, he looks – he is Tony Big Tones right now. I'm expecting at least one pick. When he plays. And Dak, before this last stretch, was he always took care of the ball. Now, the more he's gotten mature, him and Pizza Boy have opened up the playbook, they have been able to – he's got more turnovers, right? He's not going to be six picks like he was a rookie. But he's like on a streak of like the old Texas – Texans savage guy that threw pick six is like for like six or seven games in a row. Like in their in – they're their bad picks. I know sometimes they get popped up. Or James Washington will drop it, but that one that one was inexcusable. I don't know what he was looking at. That is a big concern too. Is can Prescott? I know he's going to go around the huddle and dap everybody up like he does, but look, he needs to step up. I look for him to run a little bit more tomorrow. Okay. Um, any other thoughts before we make predictions? 
All I right. think that Cowboys are 2-0 and against Tampa Bay in the playoffs. Woo-hoo. Oh, hey, all time, yeah. All right, there we go. Yeah, Cowboys are 0-8 on the road. Mike Allstott. I think some of the keys to think about for a Cowboys victory, penalties, lack of turnovers, their formula, like Colin said, is run the ball. Give the ball to Tony Pollard. Pollard 316. Give the ball. Last year, Pollard only had six carries in that San Francisco game. And uh, one other thing is CeeDee Lamb only had two targets. I remember Aikman grilling Prescott because he was saying, if I see Michael out there one-on-one, I don't care what the coverage is. I'm throwing it to 88. Yeah. CeeDee Lamb has had a really good year. Second team all pro. Can he step up in a big way? Because yeah. like Colin was talking about, yeah, he's had the numbers, but the eye test, I don't want to speak for you, but you were saying something to that effect. I, I, he, he has put up better numbers than he has, and he's stepped into that role of number one wide receiver. Still doesn't pass the eye test to me. Still does not feel like a number one wide receiver when I see him. Um, he has been playing good at the end of the season, so I'm not hating. I just yeah. it, it, It's just a gut feeling. He does not remind me of Des Bryant. He does not feel like that number one guy. Yeah. We also, too, when it was warm outside, and I love that you're right. You're at Tampa. It's going to be warm there. Um, that's bad for us, too, because Brady, it's going to be warm for him. But um, our – It's cold at night without his wife, though. Well, with that. Yeah, but do you think he's has is lacking companionship in the bedroom if he wants – he may not be wanting. I just wanted to take a shot, yeah, Jesse. Exactly. Okay, there I just go. wanted no, to get no, into his head. He's hearing this right now. That's He's it. a big fan of the That's Cowboys, right. Cowboys, Cowboys yeah. podcast. That's what I heard. Do you guys think that – bringing it back to sports. <laughs> do you guys think – because these players are human. <laughs> do you think that – because I remember Mike McCarthy at the beginning at the post game after San Francisco said I could see it in their eyes. They were a little nervous. And they talked about it looks like a physical team. San Francisco is. They're tough. But I always go, if you look at Madden, we're tough too. We have a lot of good players. Yeah. Do you think these Cowboys can get imitated and the human factor comes into it? Because I could see last week, like you said, the defense, like, okay, come on, come on. And then Prescott throwing that pick six. It's just human nature. Like, dude, I'm out. I'm well, out. and you wonder, is there a, you know, last year – we, we were one and done, and we don't want to do that again. So is there going to be a little more confidence? Are they going to feel a little more, okay, we've been here before. We know what we, know what we did wrong last year. Let's see if we can correct this. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. We're going to see. I think, you know, I, I hope they play well. I, I, I want them to win. I, I think that awesome. there's a lot of people who may – you know, who knows what crazy Jerry will do if they lose, if they lose poorly. I mean, he may fire them all, you know, and Sean Payton is going to go to Denver and then we're going to be stuck with, you know, yeah. <laughs> someone. Sean and, Payton's know, on speed, though. Mean, there's, there's two different ways you want to go into the playoffs. One, like we talked about, is being on a roll, being on a hot streak and winning some games. Or you want to go in there a little pissed off. And I think the Cowboys have a lot to prove. The Cowboys always have something to prove because they haven't won anything in so long. Um, Do they play like it though, right? But I think they have a lot to prove. And like the Mavericks, when they won, I think you got to go through the gauntlet. And I think going to Brady, where we lost the first game of the season, got off to a rough start at the beginning of the season, got to take it back and you got to run it back. And if they can push through that, I think the confidence is going to go through the roof. See – we we talk, going back to the Mavericks championship run. Mm-hmm. I had said that if they could win that first round, they may be able to do a little something. But it's going to be tough to get through that first round. So let's th- let's let's be op- let's put our cowboy blue glasses on. You go on the road. You beat Brady. Um, you know they're only they're a former Super Bowl team only from a couple of years ago, and all of a sudden, okay, we got a little something. Then you go your next game, um, whoever it is. Let's say you find a way to beat them, and now you're in an NFC Championship game. You're going okay, all right. So funny you said that because I was thinking about it this week when I put on my blue optimistic fans is 
I remember in 2011, it was really towards the end of the season, the Mavericks played the Lakers, who were coming off of back-to-back championship wins, and they had their full complement of players, including uh, 2-4, and they just mopped the Mavericks. I mean, just made us embarrassed. Yeah. And I remember thinking, boy, we ain't doing nothing in the playoffs. And then I remember, you're right, when we played Portland in that first round, we won the first game. We won the second game. Game three, we were up like at least 20, 25 points. Gave up that huge lead to a guy named Brandon Roy, who always got hurt. He was uh, Lillard before it was Brandon Roy. And he came back from a terrible injury that basically was his career, and that was his swan song that game. Mavericks came back in game four and actually did win them, and they slayed the dragon and that beast. I can equivalent it to that just like y'all did because – First of all, yeah, the Cowboys, you know, 2007 when they came into here and they beat us when we are undefeated, that has nothing to do with tomorrow's game. It's right. a great stat. Right. The stat for me is that Cowboy, Brady is 2-0 and in 2021 and 2022 against this team. Yeah. You know? So if we can, like you said, if we can go into the GOAT's house and slay the – yeah, talk about confidence. But also to – Dad, I understand what you're saying – do they learn from their mistakes last year? Do they learn from their preparation? I do think part of last year's heartbreak is what helped them in that Houston game when he threw that pick on the goal line, Prescott. Mm-hmm. But they got that goal line stands and they went 98 yards. That is hard to do. I don't care if it is Houston. That So I'm thinking in that situation, I did think in my head, well, Cowboys would have lost that game last year or two, two years ago or whatever. Yeah. Right. That mental stability. But then again, that's a regular season game, and that is against uh, inferior competition compared to what you're going to get in the playoffs. It goes back to, can we stop the bleeding? Because you're not going to have a perfect game. Or if limit the mistakes to minor ones. Right. Okay, A five-yard false start penalty, but it wasn't after a huge run. Not the, hu- not the really bad turnover that gives them the short field or the block punt. Or the pick six, right? If we're gonna throw a pick, let's make sure it's a sixty-yard bomb, so it's like it's a long, a long so, punt. Like a punt yeah. The last thing I'm gonna say is that the key to the Dallas Cowboys is everything we've talked about. They got to get off to a fast start. Yeah. The problem with the Cowboys is that they're all they. The problem with them since Minnesota, really, or maybe Thanksgiving with the Giants, is that they're always down early. Yeah. They dig themselves a hole. You look at the past playoff games; they're always down early. They're trying yeah. to dig. That takes them out of their run. Uh, game plan, and then it makes the fans on edge. I guess they don't have that home pressure. You know, in, in business, yeah. we talk about if if you hit your financial goals in the first quarter, it's almost as if you've halfway to hitting your goal. But if you don't hit your financial goals in the first quarter, you're chasing that, right? And so, yes, you need to get off a good start. You need to um, get up and see what happens. All right, and that I think is where eighty eight needs to step up. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of eighty eight in the second half. I yeah. would love to see eighty eight in the first half. And yeah. last thing too, we when it was hot outside, is we used those three ten three tight end sets. Yeah. We have not seen that probably since they did that whack a mole. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully yeah. we can bring some of that back. Yeah. All right. So game preview: Cowboys at Tampa Monday Night Football. So we get Joe and Troy. The Cowboys are. Favored by two and a half at Tampa. So, as usual, we're going to go your Vegas pick and then uh, your heart with a score. JW, you go first. So, I, I think if I was if I was betting money, I would say that Tampa wins, much less covers. I mean, Tampa is going to win. Um, they'll probably win 21-14. My heart is we flip it, that the Cowboys end up being 24 and Tampa 14. Okay, Colleen? Oh, man. If I was in Vegas right now, I'd, I'd say that the Cowboys cover two and a half. But okay. who wins, though, in Vegas? Cowboys. Cowboys? Cowboys. Okay. Um, your heart? My heart, I would say Cowboys... Beat beat them up pretty good. Like like I'm I'm it, my head is saying they'll win by a field goal, so they'll cover the two and a half. But my heart is saying that they're gonna win by ten or fourteen points. Nice. 
All right, so uh, in Vegas, all those stats, and you got to prove it to me, I'm taking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You'd be a fool to go for the Cowboys. You got to prove it to me, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, that's who I was in Vegas. Now, this whole week, I have been thinking Cowboys haven't lost two in a row. They probably had to pay for their bar tabs this week because they were so terrible, so no one's been patting them on the back all week. McCarthy had, well, I don't know how much we got in McCarthy. So I think the Cowboys are going to win 21-17 okay. in Vegas. Now, my blue Cowboys glasses, Cowboys 38, Tampa Bay 0. <laughs> Cowboys right. blow them it. out. I could see it. It's a 3-0 three, three game, and the Cowboys score five TDs in a row. And uh, Parsons, no, never mind. She's going to say takes out Brady, but I don't want to. We'll, <laughs> no, we'll, no, we'll, no, we'll, no. Cut, we'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, hey, if this is our last show, thank you, everybody, for yeah. listening and providing feedback. We've really enjoyed doing yeah. it. We've been in contract negotiations over the Christmas holidays, so we, we apologize we weren't able to. Uh, get as many episodes out, but hopefully your Sunday or your Monday before the game, you're enjoying it as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. And as much as we enjoy the most refreshing margarita out there, Jalapeno Tree House Margarita. New sponsor for the new year, Jalapeno Tree. Check your your local listings. Hey, Rusty Weatherly. Crazy good Mexican food. The Jalapeno Tree. Yeah. I am with that. We are out. Uh, be safe, be kind, and uh, go Cowboys. What's up, Cowboys. dudes? What's up, dudes? Cowboys! Thank you very much! We did it our way, baby! We did it! We did it! We did it! We did it. We did it.